If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. As a guy like yourself who has watched offense for, for 40 years in the league, just how enjoyable is it to watch that sort of cat, cat and mouse game between Brady and the defense? Yeah, it's fun, man. That's that's the most fun there is for me in this game. You know, it was, it was calling plays, but watching your quarterback, uh, don't get caught up with who's catching the ball. Just throw it to the guys that are open. And don't force it downfield because you can get just as many yards dinking and dunking making first downs. And, uh, yeah, it's, watching him play, he's a surgeon. Uh, you know, like I said, he's going to figure you out if you're going to play too deep shell, if you're – if you're rotating, he'll figure all that out real quick. And uh, then it's, it's hard on the defense, that's for sure. Hey, yo, Key, who would the Bucks rather see win tonight, the Cardinals or Rams? I think they probably would rather see the Rams win. Your Buccaneers have officially advanced to the next round of the playoffs. Had to wait a little bit to find out who they were going to play. Probably added a little extra work there for the coaching staff for a day or so. But now they know it is going to be the Los Angeles Rams at Raymond James Stadium. The Bucks look good. The Bucks yeah, are good. Yeah, that's the, that's and, the bottom line. And they line. continue to get healthy. Again, I think they're still the most well-rounded team in the NFL. The team that many in the NFC would be upset with the most are the Rams because they had the Niners dead to rights and let them off the hook. And now the yeah. Cowboys are out, and we might find out that the Packers will feel the same way at this very point next weekend. Yes. You never know. Yes. And the Bucks are sitting there at home. They're going to get the winner of Monday Night Football, a West Coast team on a short week coming all the way across the country, and they're the two seeds sitting back. They might not have to move all the way out to the Super Bowl. It's entirely yeah. possible that that's the case for Tampa yeah. right now. I, Dan? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. The the. The way, you know, if you're Green Bay, you're sitting there going, seriously? Like, this was the – if I had to sit down and, and script out how to beat the Green Bay Packers or how to attack and beat or what's the weakness of Green Bay, I would just copy and paste the San Francisco 49ers. And that's why Green Bay's got to be sitting there going, you got to be kidding me. So far, it seems like this has gone well for the Buccaneers going all the way back to last year. So let's let's talk about this first Rams game and what all you think might be similar or different to that first matchup so that the Buccaneers can know it'll go a little bit differently this time. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's five straight rematches from the regular season if you go back to last year. Look, this is a very good Rams team that uh, has, at various points in this season has been considered a Super Bowl, strong Super Bowl contender. Pretty much that talk began as soon as they got Matthew Stafford in the offseason trade. And Matthew Stafford has certainly been big for them. They're sixth in the NFL in points differential. They scored 27.1 points per game. And don't forget, they beat the Buccaneers 34-24 back in week three. And that was with a sort of garbage time touchdown for Gio Bernard. So that game was a little more lopsided than it might even seem. Stafford went 343 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Can you overlook Tom Brady? I mean, because, <laughs> I mean, even with no Fournette and no Ronald Jones, and no Godwin and no Antonio Brown. They he he still put up thirty on the Eagles yeah. yesterday. He's yeah. incredible. It's remar it's unbelievable. Once Tom Brady figures you out, you're in trouble. Um, I don't know that he spends any more time in the postseason, but he, he played a team that he had played earlier this year. Um, can you just kind of expand on, on what you mean by by Brady? Yeah, everybody's got something new. You know, each and every week how they're going to try to defend us. And, uh, you know, I thought we had a heck of a – we had two game plans, one if the weather didn't change and then one if the weather right. did. Obviously, we got the one we liked the most, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and that's the no huddle. And uh, just doing a really good job with short intermediate passes, getting it out of his hands, knowing they're going to play soft. Uh, and I thought Byron did a great job of running the ball and making them stop the run, which opened up a couple guys one-on-one. -on -one. Right. And, and I'm, I'm curious, like the, the no huddle, the, the up tempo, we've seen that, you know, from you a couple of times to start games. Is, is that just to get the energy going or you want to keep them in the same defense? You want to use that? A little, a little bit of both. Tire out that off that defensive line quick as much as we can. Um, but it's it, when you look back and do the self scout, that's when we've been at our best this year. Right. And uh, so why not do it more?
They were in a different class. Yes, not even close. It's a different class of a football team. Yeah. And I don't even think they were motivated to play in the third and fourth quarter. They were, like just, that, they were right? coasting. I mean, it's not only personnel and coaching. Yeah. There was this overwhelming feeling. I was watching this game. Like one team was like, okay, now the real season starts. Let's get to work, right. guys. Get right. out here. And right. We're going to be the best we've been. Right. Okay. And so tell me, both sides of the ball, the, the biggest things that you think the Bucks are going to be needing to look out for. Well, what, what Stafford are they going to get? I mean, listen, the guy was amazing. He threw for nearly 5,000 yards, had 41 touchdowns, only Tom Brady had more. And they thought that he would unlock this offense for Sean McVay. And for most of the part, he has. I mean, he certainly unlocked Cooper Cup, who had a ridiculous season with 145 catches, nearly 2,000 yards, and 16 touchdowns. So trying to slow down that duo is big. But Stafford also does get himself and his team in trouble sometimes. He tied for the league lead in interceptions. So with all the challenges that Matt Stafford gives you, he also gives you some opportunities along the way. So I think that's probably going to be the key to the game. Bruce, I I know that uh, Tom getting rid of the ball every week is fast. I think yesterday was even faster. He said that he knows where it's going before it's snapped. You mentioned he can see the rotation. I mean, do you truly – does he truly – predict or, or uh, anticipate exactly where that ball is going pre-snap yeah he he's he's extremely good at that and uh it might not be to the guy but he knows the combination and uh as, as soon as the ball snap that combination he deciphers it right now which one's getting it and uh that's as simple as you can make the game for a quarterback but a lot of them can't process that information brother it, it, it boggles my mind, not only the performance, Rich, and I've always felt this way about him, how much every single play matters to him. I, I just, I, I, I don't, I can't even conceptualize the level of expectation for excellence he has every single play. Every single play. You see him miss a throw, he gets frustrated with himself. You see a guy not do what he's expecting, he gets, he gets visibly upset. And it's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to me. Yeah, and then you know that guy named Aaron Donald, kind of <laughs> kind of an important dude over there. Yeah, that's a star-studded defense. They've really, uh, you know, they've thrown draft picks all over the place in order to get a defense that now also has Von Miller on it. Don't forget that and Leonard Floyd. But uh, the you know Aaron Donald is what drives that team. He had he had twelve point five sacks this year, which almost seems disappointing for Aaron Donald. He's still killing it. A defensive player of the year candidate, 25 quarterback hits and four forced fumbles. And they have another total star in Jalen Ramsey, the corner who really plays anywhere he wants in the secondary. He had four interceptions and 16 passes defense. That's high numbers for him because usually quarterbacks don't even try to throw it anywhere near him. Imagine you won't know much until later this week, but but one to just check on that ankle and, and whether this week is in play for him to come back and play at all. Well, as tough as he is, I think there's a chance. You know, he's in a boot right now. It probably he and Ryan are going to go all the way to Friday before we know anything true. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. I'm so intrigued by the Bucks right now um, because of the injuries. Uh, but at the same time, I, that offensive line, if Tristan Wirfs is healthy, and those he's got two gold jackets thrown through still. And he still has Mike Evans and Rob Gronkowski. I think Mike Evans is going to be a Hall of Famer. So I can't. I can't sit here and say I'm discounting Tampa Bay getting back strictly because of who the quarterback is and strictly because I think they're good enough on offense. But I thought it was just in a fierce way showed up. One team was all business. We got to get to where we're supposed to be in February. And the other was just kind of on bonus time. It's go time for the Bucks. The Bucks, totally. Bucks are, the, uh, the to me, the, the team that we could sit here and go, they're the only great team in football if they get healthy here. Like, really? And they're close. They're close to being healthy. I know they're not going to have A.B. or Chris Godwin, but damn, they still got, you know, Mike Evans, who's a star, and Gronkowski and Scotty Miller and a good stable of running backs. They got enough there to make it all happen. You know, the Levante David was back. The secondary is somewhat healthy other than Sean Murphy bunting. Shaquille Barrett and JPP were back. Hey, Bruce, uh, considering what's going on with uh, Tristan and, and, and uh, Ryan, uh, what's your level of concern with pass protection, uh, Bruce? There were a few breakdowns. Uh, yesterday yeah I thought Josh Wells other than the one bull rush I thought he played really good because he was playing on a bag leg too uh, but our inside guys uh, got beat on a couple of twists that shouldn't have happened and uh, misread what they thought was good they were going to do and we turned the guy loose but uh, easily things to correct you know they had the injuries on the old line yesterday but they came back and played so hopefully they'll be okay worth some a little concerned about but like to your point it jumped out right away oh, it was man. a clear 
an obvious difference in the quality of the football team, the versatility in which they can play with on both sides of the football, and got to a 31 nothing lead and just coasted from there. It yeah. was like, oh, okay. Like, let's, I mean, really, they, they could have sipped pina coladas in the fourth quarter and still yeah. won the game by the same score there. Hey, Coach, uh, along the same lines of the injuries, um, it looked like Levante and JPP and Shaq Barrett may have been on a little bit of a pitch count. How did those guys uh, respond when they went out there and played? How did those injuries look? Yeah, they all played good. You know, Shaq didn't look hurt when he was running with that ball. Uh, mm -mm. Levante uh, is not as sore as he thought he'd be today. Um, JPP's fine. They all, they all had the good ro good rotation going. They all played about 30, 35 plays. And, Except and Levante, Levante played more. But. And, and, and back to Ryan. Um, I, I mean, I, can you just speak to the fact that, I mean, he, he looked like he suffered a pretty significant injury and that the fact that he was able to go out there and, and finish the game, just, just what can you say about that performance? Oh, just mental toughness is off the charts. I mean, he's he's a tough a dude as there is playing this game. And, uh, you know, that thing was going to have to be broken for him not to go back in. Wow. Thank you. We know this Bucks defense is real. They are. And when they're really healthy, they're going to be tough to stop. I would say the opportunities for the Bucks may be in some changes in that secondary. They lost Jordan Fuller, one of their starting safeties, for the rest of the playoffs. And Taylor Rapp was out for this last game, their other starting safety, uh, with a concussion. Don't know if he'll be back. But the situation was dire enough that made them go out and re-sign Eric Weddle, who hasn't played in the NFL in two years. So maybe there'll be some discord in the secondary that the Buccaneers can take advantage of. Hey, Coach, with you guys having the next man up mentality, um, we're obviously seeing a lot of players that probably wouldn't have gotten as much time or reps this season. What have you? What are the biggest developments that you've seen out of Mike Edwards and Jamel Dean? And is there a player that actually surprised you the most this season? Uh, yeah, it's been great performances by almost everybody that's got their opportunity. Um, boy, it'd be hard to pick out one. Um, I think Jamel Dean's made great progress for sure. That was by far his best game. I think everybody's seeing what I've always known about Keyshawn Vaughn, uh, that he's a legit player. And, uh, you know, the receivers, they've all stepped in and did their job. So um, they're really one person it'd be hard to find. That's it for this video. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. So please like and subscribe. That way you'll always have a new Tom Brady video to watch every single day.